from here. I don't know what time it is where the rest of you are watching, but it's uh, the sun has just recently come up and uh, it's so it's early. Um, yesterday, we covered sort of a foundational understanding of the process uh, of psychoemotional disorders from the perspective of the five spirits and also then from the perspective of levels of chi. So we talked about the shen in terms of consciousness, the paw in terms of that sort of reflexive, uh, uh, instinctual body memory kind of thing, the hun in terms of dreams and aspirations and symbols, um, and then the yi and jur together in terms of mental faculties, the ability to uh, collect data, process data, store data, and then recollect data. And what happens when those spirits are misaligned um, in terms of psychoemotional distress. And then we talked about those levels of chi and how each level of chi provides uh, an avenue for self-preservation through the creation of latency um, in order to keep going, in order to survive. So Wei Qi is sort of a sinew thing um, where if uh, I can't expel a pathogenic factor or a pathogenic experience, then I will store it in the body tissues because if I store it in the superficial tissues, it can't affect the organs. Um, Ying Qi is a completely different process. That's a much more internalized process that's reliant on blood. And if I can't digest an experience, then I, the low collateral system will use blood to create latency in the periphery of the body to take it away from the organs. The divergence put it into the joints in order to preserve life and the eight extras push everything down into the daimai. And so um, the reason for bringing that up is because each channel system that we have addresses those levels of chi, but the eight extras address them all. And so you can treat wei chi issues from the eight extras. You can treat ying chi issues from the eight extras. You can treat yuan chi issues from the eight extras. So that makes them a very powerful tool um, for our complex issues, for uh, mixed patterns, for neurological issues, for psychoemotional issues. Um, yesterday, we talked about the first ancestry. Um, and I saw earlier somebody asked a question in terms of defining what I meant by ancestry. So I'm going to answer that now because it fits with the sort of review. When Jeffrey Yuen talks about the eight extras, he talks about them from the perspective of how um, the resources and curriculum unfolds. And so we start with the Chiang Mai because the Chiang Mai is the source vessel that gives birth to all of the rest. And its first act is to move from a state of wholeness, oneness, unity, into a state of polarity so life can exist. And so its first act is to give birth to primal yin and primal yang in the form of the ren mai and du mai. This first act is the originating act in terms of how life unfolds. And so Jeffrey frequently uses the term ancestry as a way of signifying that these eight extraordinary vessels are generations of unfolding over time. And so the first ancestry, which is the Chong, the Ren and the Du, have all the resources within them necessary to give birth to the next ancestry, which are the way vessels, which take those resources gifted by the first ancestry and manage them and distribute them over time as we age. 
And then the third ancestry are the chow vessels who take those resources from the first ancestry through the second ancestry into the present moment and use those resources to occupy space, to uh, move through the world in the present moment. Um, at the bottom of that unfolding is the daimai. And the reason we put the daimai in at the bottom of that unfolding is because as we'll see later when I talk more about the daimai, it has a function as the only horizontal vessel in the body. It has function that is directly related to the first ancestry because it's the Sea of Mingmun. So it is a sea of resources like the first ancestry. And it has function related to the second ancestry and related to the third ancestry. And so when we talk about ancestry, it's not just a word that Jeffrey uses, although he uses it frequently. It is about understanding that these vessels unfold over a lifetime in the same way that consciousness unfolds over a lifetime, in the same way that generations of humanity unfold and evolve over a lifetime. So we're talking about um, a, a sequential or a cyclic kind of movement. And that the word ancestries um, represents that pretty well. So we did get through the first ancestry yesterday. So we have a pretty good understanding now of the primary resources it takes to have a life, um, how we, have within us gifted from previous generations and also from the heavenly mandate from the cosmos all the resources that we could possibly need to live the life we were meant to live to live our curriculum to pursue our destiny if you will and so now we need to start looking at how those resources are being used. So now we start to look at postnatal influence on this prenatal system in a way that has to do with the choices that we make. Why do we choose to use our resources in certain ways and not in others? Or why do we become habituated in our choices which lets us use those resources in an unconscious and often counterproductive kind of way. So we're going to look at how the way my are supposed to use these resources and how the child my are supposed to use these resources for optimal health for thriving. And then we're going to take a look at all the things that could possibly go wrong with that and what happens when we don't use those resources appropriately or what happens when we make bad choices or unconscious choices what happens to the system so that's the goal for today and at the end of that we'll wrap it all up not uh pun not intended um, with the daimai, because the daimai does indeed, in its horizontal movement, wrap it all up. Um, and we'll look at the seriousness of latency created in the daimai when life is so challenging and so overwhelming and so um, tragic, if you will, traumatic, if you will, that we have to separate ourselves from ourselves in order to um, forget the trauma. Um, so that's the plan for today. I will say ahead of time, when you start to look at the pathways of the transporters, there's a lot of overlap. The Yang transporters, Yang Chao and Yang Wei, look very similar. The yin transporters, the yin wei and yin chao look very similar. 
And there's a, a very big overlap in function, a very big overlap in symptomology. And so it is not as black and white as the Wren and the Dumai. And even those have overlap, but the overlap is a little more um, complicated with the transporters. So we have plenty of time today to do that. And so if things do not seem clear to you, or if you are unable to make distinctions with these vessels, please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. Hopefully the breakout exercises will help you to anchor some of that information a little better. Um, and if they don't, I'm happy to answer whatever question um, you might have. So let's get started. So we're starting first with a sort of um, overview, if you will. of the uh, four transporters together to sort of look at what they're uh, able to accomplish. So the Waymai, which are typically translated as um, linking vessels, the word uh, Wei in Chinese is usually translated as linking vessels. In uh, a lot of the textbooks, they, um, they use the description of a very fine thread holding on to the ankle of a bird and being attached or linked to something so that the bird can't escape. This sort of idea is um, important, not in terms of being captive, um, but it's important to understand this idea of linking as a way of maintaining continuity in life. It's a way of saying we are always connected to our resources. We are naturally connected. There is a system whose function it is to keep us connected to our primary resources. And in making this connection and making this link to our primary resources, we can maintain continuity we can maintain continuity throughout life from birth to death. And this is important because let's face it, uh, you know, if any of you are over the age of 40 uh, in our uh, course today, then you know, as you age, your uh, requirements for resources change. Some resources you need more of, some resources you need less as you age. And so, to have a system in place that maintains this link, maintains this continuity as we age is uh, profound and useful. Um, the downside of that is that it uh, is only as good as our relationship to aging is. And some of us don't like to get older. And so there might be a lot of resistance in that system, which we 